Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio, recorded uh, at River Road Studios in Eugene, Oregon. So, Sue, what do you do to what do you do when you're not here? What do you do when you're not recording? When I am not recording at Real Herbalism Radio, then I am doing Occupy Medical, which is a 501c3, and we have a clinic that is in Springfield that is an actual building. We have patients that come in through the medical suite, and then we have a hospitality suite. So it's holistic care. So we feed people, and we have in the hospitality suite, we have a charger for people's phones so they can stay in contact with the unhoused because it's a free clinic. And we have the, um, we give away blankets and socks and um, little first aid kits and toothbrushes and tampons and all the things that you need in order to survive. Uh, and then we have uh, some just dry goods to give away for people that some, we have housed and unhoused people that come through. So when the money runs out at the end of the month, we sure have a lot of folks that, that come by that live in the neighborhood that, you know, they come away with rice and canned goods and things like that so they can feed their families. And uh, then we also have a Wednesday clinic, which takes place at uh, an unhoused day shelter area which we offer haircuts there. And then we have uh, nurses and, and herbalists and oftentimes doctors there as well, which is lovely. Um, and I do the clinic management for both of those. We have other scattered clinics throughout our, we have a history of doing um, uh, emergency clinics. We had one for people that needed their, their uh, passports changed because they had changed their gender so you need to have all that paperwork filled out um, and a doctor needed to sign all of that. And we've had bilingual clinics for pediatric when the ICE issue was a, a problem mm -hmm. for kids. Families didn't feel safe. They felt like if they went into the emergency room or clinic, then they would not come out with their children. They would end up being incarcerated for being undocumented. So we, we try to fit the need as best we can to keep our finger on the pulse, literally and figuratively. And then I have the herbal consulting site uh, myself. That is, it, you can you can reach me at um, Sierra Lupe Consulting at gmail dot com, and you can also um, just get a hold of me via this, the Practical Herbalist. So, and I have my own little page, Sierra, Sierra Lupe. There ain't that many people with that name out there, so it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. All right, Candice, what about you? Well, when I'm not here recording and doing things for the Practical Herbalist and the Herbalism Society and Real Herbalism Radio, and I'm not working at Mud Paw Design House, which I'll let mm -hmm. you talk about more since we are a good partnership on that. Um, are we? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to pretend we are. Okay. As long as you do what I tell you, it's right. a great partnership, right? right? Great partnership. It's a cute logo y'all have, too. Thank you. Thank I you. Liked it. I got to see it for the first time. That was fun. Um, right now, I'm I'm excited because my first I my I do artwork as well. I do mm. fiber arts, and one of my pieces is in a show for the first time. It's in the Boundaries show, which is right now exhibiting or is on exhibit is is showing in um, Benton, at the Benton County Historical Society, and uh, I'm one of a group of I think it's about twenty five or so. And it was for that for that we had to do larger pieces. The minimum size was thirty inches by thirty inches, and so most most shows are not you know usually you can you can have most shows you can get in there are smaller. Mm -hmm. you know, size pieces. So this one was rather large and it was a big one. And for me, this is huge just even to be working for a show specifically rather than just making what I feel, like, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is my first time in a show. I'm excited about that. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Do you think we can get pictures of that on at least our Facebook page, Instagram, things like that for people to enjoy? I have to make sure that it'll be okay, but I think it will be. Oh. I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't know. Oh, I have okay. never been in a show. This is like the most well, professional I've ever been. You've, we've taken pictures of that quilt, so that, that you could put in. Yeah, Facebook. but I have to make sure that it's okay with the people that are running the show because oh, there are okay. like when you get out, go into shows there are some of them have rules like this one you can't have had your quilt that you're submitting exhibited anywhere within i think it was like a hundred mile radius or something like oh, that so it's more of a draw yeah oh, okay yeah uh -huh. for like six months or something like that oh, so goodness. i don't know if if i can publish any electronic 
versions of it mm-hmm. thus far i haven't because mm-hmm. i just wanted to be safe right but to be honest i really don't know so that's we'll a find out it's right. a question there and stay then, tuned listeners yeah and then i also am now the co-chair for our studio art quilt associates local connection here in the eugene springfield area mm-hmm. so we are called valley south and i'm excited i am co-chairing with with christiane bond she's an amazing artist who has done a lot of work in other areas and has now moved into fiber arts and she's a sweetheart. I love her. So that's like one of my exciting sidelines as it were. That's exciting. Well, congratulations on that too. Thanks. I'm excited about that. Mm Y'all have to tell me if you like see my piece. Yes. I'm so excited. Do they have a, a, a social media presence or a website or anything? I don't know. They will now that you're in. I'm going to tell them. You guys have to do that. Yeah, look for this. The Studio Art Quilt Associates group that I'm in does. We do have a Facebook group Mm -hmm. that you can get into. Um, If you look at sakwa.com, saqa.com, that is the parent organization. And honestly, it is it is the organization. We're just a little itty bitty chapter out Mm -hmm. of many. It's an international group now. I mean, we have people, we have groups all over the world. Mm-hmm. And um, there's, I don't remember when the next big conference is. They usually have one every year and I think it's spring. Mm-hmm. But then they have smaller conferences. Like our area has a conference every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, we had one last year. I got a chance to, Pat Polly was the speaker and I got a chance to go to a workshop with her, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. It's really cool when you get an opportunity to really talk with or or spend time with um, artists who are really experienced in the field. And we have quite a few of those in our local connection. But then we also had that chance like there she came in, Pat Polly came in. And and so we had that opportunity. It's really yeah. it's just it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, I do or work at or own Mud Pod Design House with Candice, and I have um, another business is Ace High Heat Graphics. With I currently work with my son. Uh, so on the Mud Pod so- side, we do. Um, well, right now I'm doing two very large websites that are going to be live this at the end of June, which culminates into a two and a half year project. Mm-hmm. No, uh, they were they went live at the end of June. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, they went live at the end of June. And uh, we're still working through the bugs and the hiccups because mm-hmm. the site's so big, that big. You know, after two and a half years of working on it, there's going to be stuff that right you have to yeah. fix. Yeah. So yeah. we're yeah. going through all that, and uh, and our print offering site. Right, we are just, we are um, launching oh. launching. Um, <laughs> either it's launched, and we're still working out yeah. working out the kinks, or we are um, people well. are ordering right now. Mm. Yeah. Well, kind of a combination of both because we've got it launched, but we're adding to our product line. So we decided to go with a soft launch in that we launched kind of early, but with just a few small number and we've been adding the products so that because I get the joy of adding all the products. Yes, you do. So I decided the slow move was better. Right. (laughs) So (laughs) take it. You know, one week at a time, add a couple more products. So, yes, we are still in the process of building it. When that is 100% ready to go, we'll promote that here with the website and let people uh, be able to order printing directly from Mudpaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So business cards, brochures, banners, you can order directly from us. Yeah. And you can submit your files and get them just like this to print. Yeah. My goal is hopefully by back, by back to school, we have we can have a grand opening and maybe do some kind of Promo, promo, promo something. So we're always cooking up something. We're always doing something different. Um, those businesses keep uh, expanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I do when I'm not doing this part here. <laughs> Aside from woodworking and putting in paths at the house and other right. parenting stuff. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Fending off the geese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fending off the geese. Oh, have the, we got some sweet goose. Annie stories. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but with that, uh, Maria, Gro- Maria Noel Gross came in. She talked about um, lung health and herbs for lung health, and which is really appropriate for us, especially in the Pacific Northwest, because this time of year, the smoke can be pretty bad. And, you know, when we first moved to Oregon, we knew there was forest fires mm-hmm. around, but we never really experienced the smoke. Right. Okay. But in the last 
three or four years, the fires have gotten so bad around us, California, even Oregon, British Columbia, Washington, that you know, we wake up in the morning and you, the, the air pollution is so intense. And yeah. with people with any kind of uh, asthma or lung condition, it's, got, it's the worst ever. Um, even for someone like me that doesn't suffer from all- allergies, even on those smoky days, I don't want to be out. They're just awful. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about is how to help with your lung health. So now here are your hosts, Candace Hunter and Sue Sierra Lupe. I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Sue Sierra Lupe. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Real Herbalism, Herbalism Radio. Radio. Breathe deep. Yeah. Uh, try to breathe. Try, try to breathe. Just try to breathe. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that we're talking about this because at the clinic that I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. There, people are coming in because they have asthma mm-hmm. and during the smoky times and during, of course, the pollen rich times, yeah. it's pretty bad. You know, it's yeah. causing anxiety attacks on top of that. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get to a doctor. Uh, so people are coming into free clinics that normally are just going to their regular doctor, but they're, they are going through their um, inhalers oh, uh, yeah. rapidly. They are. Yeah, I mean, even the folks like myself who had allergies in the hay fever season and generally look forward to the dry season because it means less hay fever. Yep. Now we're suffering and our lungs are already compromised because of the hay fever that we are just, you know, we don't have mm-hmm. time to recover. Right. And that's, you know, most of our population, even the folks who aren't born with hay fever, most people develop it eventually in this climate. Mm-hmm. So, yep. you know... <laughs> You see a lot yeah. of people running around here and they've got those masks on. Yeah. 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 I've actually Just, broken down and worn those some too. Does that help? Yeah. I like to believe it does, but I'm not sure that it really does that much. Mm-hmm. I think if I had asthma, I probably would assume that it doesn't do it because even if it helps just a teeny bit, that would be better than nothing. Right. But Yes. I mean, I'll keep out some of the particulate, but some of yeah. it's so small. It yeah, it just really gets matter. right through. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I know that there are different masks that have uh, better concentrations. If you go to those yeah. industrial shops or you go online, you can find ones that have a um, much tighter fit for a particulate matter. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. some have diaphragms in the center of them. So you inhale uh, and it goes through the mask, but you exhale and it goes through the diaphragm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when you exhale on some of those that don't have that, you know, you're exhaling out, but the pressure is so much it'll just, you know, it just, I find yeah. them uncomfortable, but the ones yeah. with the diaphragm, mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. use, I can do those. Like for construction, yeah. or those are those are ones that I'm familiar with because that's that's what I have in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go on Amazon and you search on like um, air quality mask or something like that, mm-hmm. you get. Not only will you find those, but you'll also find a whole bunch of little pretty ones. Oh, There's nice. lots of pretty ones available With now. butterfly stickers and things. Yes. Great. Yeah. 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 With like pretty With designs, prints. unicorns, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Good God. The fact that we need to do that in general and then to say, make, well, now let's make it a fashion accessory. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just says, well, you're dressing. Dressing you're putting, up the problem. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I hate to see that this. Yeah. It's like you're dressing up a pig. I mean, there's a bigger issue here, which yeah. is so much larger, right. but it costs less to do that than it does to fix the problem of yeah. forest In fires. In the short and, run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. as, as just a little, you know, single person in this, in this whole giant sea of mess with not a ton of money and not being a, you know, uber wealthy one percenter, I don't have the power to change a lot of the air quality issues. I can buy an expensive air quality filtration system for my home and hide inside for the entire fire season Mm -hmm. and the hay fever season, which I have done to some extent, or I can get my pretty little mask and go out and Mm -hmm. try to just, you know, enjoy as best I can. Yeah. I mean, plants still got to get watered guys. Yep. You know, who's going to do it? (laughs) You know, I'm not saying that you don't do things. I'm just saying that, we're just first of all you have to wear this thing mm-hmm. and now we're gonna make it pretty yeah but there's you know the stuff up here is like why can't we just figure this out people yeah uh, it you seems know. like we have figured it out we're just not implementing some of the the solutions i think the frustration is that we had figured it out we were implementing the solutions and then for reasons i don't fully understand we as a nation decided to not to 
Mm-hmm. And well, then we went backwards and stopped with the prevention part and moved into the putting out the fires that have literally. now started to occur because <laughs> we weren't preventing them well. Right. And that's the part where I'm like, I don't understand how on earth it's okay to say, just like with medicine, mm-hmm. why on earth are we not spending most of our money, time, and energy on preventing disease? Mm-hmm. Why do we wait till the disease manifests and then start doing something? Right. No, you do it before and hope you don't have the disease. Mm-hmm. And you prepare for both situations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, I mean, some people will still get the disease. Sure. Even with prevention. Yep. But it's a much smaller number of people that get the disease if everybody's focused on prevention mm-hmm. than if we do what we currently do, which is not bother. Yep. And then wait till we're really sick mm-hmm. and then say, oh, I'm drowning. Please help me. Yep. That's You dig a you French know. drain around your house. You get a little drainage problems. And then you have a sump pump if it didn't work. Ta-da. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> are you are you suggesting yeah. a moat? A moat. Wait, my phone's I going off. I could use a moat. Patrick, what have you done? I thought uh, I had silenced it. Oh, after the speech, the pre-show speech about silence your phones. <laughs> I didn't do that this time. Jeez. That's so, so embarrassing. Dun, 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 oh. dun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. Sorry about that. Right. Yeah. So, Sue, I've been thinking about that. The black nettle syrup that you do every... Um, spring going mm-hmm. into early summer to help yep. the folks with the allergies. And I've been thinking you should probably do that through this particulate season and you should probably do it with some minor modifications. Like what pretty would much, you suggest? I was thinking pretty much just add mullen to it, mm-hmm. maybe Yerba Santa if it's available. Mm. Um, well, thanks to Christina. Yeah. Then, yeah, she's donated. Christina Sanchez oh. has donated to Occupy Medical to us. Uh, the Yerba Santa. So I am very excited to have that available. And that's not something that we grow in the Pacific Northwest. Right. So, um, yeah, that's a good idea. And Our- then the other one, Christina said she's been using, she has struggled with asthma in the past. And she said that she has used um, Howie Brownstein suggested, and she tried a really, really strong licorice in infusion i don't Hmm. think it's an infusion and i don't think it's a syrup i believe it's a tincture but i'm not positive Mm -hmm. it was a very strong extraction so that might be like a solid extract i don't think it was solid i'm not entirely sure but i was thinking oh you know licorice might be i know that licorice does grow wild in this area Mm -hmm. Um, we have a um thanks to another donation there's a lot of licorice tincture that we have that so might I be could something to consider. With that yeah. One a bit too. But yeah, mm-hmm. I've been thinking about that because one of the challenges that you have when you're dealing with a lot of particulates and trying to make your lungs healthy is that you really, when your lungs are in distress, your body automatically wants to switch into, I think it's parasympathetic nervous system. Mm-hmm. So, or no, sympathetic nervous system. So it's wanting to shut down, digest, rest, and digest mm-hmm. and just deal with the. Breathing. You know, breathing, which is a serious danger. Yep. I mean, that's a mortal peril. Yep. So if you're in that mode more often than not, then your body's not getting the nutrition it needs. And your black nettle syrup has a lot of nutrition in it. Yep. And it's also got stuff in it like plantain that's moistening for the lungs. Mm-hmm. So that's really good. It has the antihistamine and in the, it. Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And the, the um, molasses that's in there is that's got the iron in it, mm-hmm. which helps your blood circulate and therefore also helps, it also helps with your blood being able to better absorb nutrition. Right. Yeah, that's the key. So I've been thinking about that. I was like, you know, that, that syrup with just a couple, and then possibly if you wanted, maybe some like milky oats or, Hmm. Something similar to calm the nervous system. Uh huh. Yeah, would, to deal with probably, the anxiety part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Or the passion flower that Maria was talking about growing. That could be another. Oh yeah. Possible. I mean, you know, in terms of just what's easy and available. Mm-hmm. You know, the milky oat season has just really kind of finished, but mm-hmm. you know. So that's what I've been thinking about for you. Yeah. Like you need, you need more formulas, right? Well, like more to I, do. I always do because <laughs> things change. So yeah. I always have to be on top of that and figure out the changes that folks need. Yeah. You no. Know, and, and then our clinics change. Yeah. As I said, we had picked up another, another clinic. Uh, so we have to be aware of that. Yeah. And What's you have, there? this year you have a lot of people who are survivors of last year's paradise fires, right? Mm-hmm. So I expect you're probably going to see more or have been seeing more intense anxiety and 
Yes. Just, you know, fear because... They see that smoke coming in and it just triggers all of these horrible yeah, memories of exactly. running for their lives with whatever they have in their hands. Yeah. Yeah. And grief. I imagine yeah. grief. And grief is processed. According to Chinese medicine, grief comes through the lungs. Mm -hmm. So that's the area that's compromised by the current climate and makes it harder to express and get through. And then their memories and grief is triggered by the same air quality issues. Mm -hmm. So it just seems to me like it's like a vicious cycle. So, mm -hmm. hmm. Ugh, that's very very difficult for folks to handle. That I think that um, trying to help people stay healthy through the whole year is something as a free clinic because mm -hmm. people can visit whenever they want every single week. Yeah, it's great. So we've been able to support quite a few folks. So they can, and one thing is for people that can go inside, then that's always a, a nice thing. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. a huge life changer. We had a, had a gentleman come in recently that I hadn't seen for a while. And, and he's, and I asked where he'd been and he said, I got housed, nice. which was a few months ago and I'm still there. And I just, you know, came back to get some vitamins. That's Yay. all. That's all he needed. His nice. face looked different. Nice. You know, the way he held himself was different. And many of the health conditions that, that were fairly serious that he was struggling with, they're just, they're being regulated. Nice. So nice. Yeah. getting people into that healthy spot so that, and he had been, he had been unhoused for, um, according to himself, to what he had said, um, almost 40 years. Yeah. So that was a huge transition for him. That is huge. I think that key is really being in a place where you feel stable and safe. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. Yeah. And, and, it, um, the addiction issues were the things that we were working with him as well as some of the, mm -hmm. the subsequent and related health conditions. And so he's been free and clear of that for a couple of years and that made it easier for him to, to jump into the housing and, you know, there's other management techniques that since he'd been in house for so long that he just didn't have. So right. part of that and that for the housed folks out there listening, those are things that you can apply to your own life. There are things that we as housed people will pick up as behaviors, grabbing fast food or, you know, not not resting enough mm -hmm. ourselves or um, letting ourselves getting my for myself and getting mad when I'm driving. Well, yeah. That's not healthy for me. Right, right. So using all of those preventative measures to yeah. keep myself healthy through the entire year when we have a crisis like forest fires, yeah. then it's easier for us to recover because we've already got that even breathing. Yes. Yeah. So then you don't start staggering yeah. in your breath and getting fearful and, and you can go through these, these crises as yeah. well. Yeah, truly. I mean, all of that, trying to keep yourself calm and, and Build your tools so that when stuff happens, you've got a, a, a grouping of tools to work with instead mm -hmm. of just one or two yep. to get yourself through it and hopefully maintain as much of your own energy and, and health as possible. Yeah. Another part of that is making sure that you have not uh, disconnected yourself from people. Right. So the, that yeah. social, I found that when people isolate themselves, their anxiety gets worse. Yes. Which perpetuates the isolation. Yes, it so, does. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed amongst my elders, the ones who live the longest always are the ones who have a stronger community. Yeah. Their community may be primarily, you know, nieces, nephews, sons, daughters, grandchildren, mm -hmm. rather than a bunch of people that aren't somehow related. But it doesn't really matter. The yeah. important part is that you have people in your life. Mm -hmm. That you reach out to people regularly, not just through Facebook, but actually in person. Right. Over the phone, maybe, but in person seems to be really one of the keys mm -hmm. as the elders who have had the best health in their older years mm -hmm. are the ones who have had people in their lives daily. Right. So. Yeah. And having that um, physical for people that um, are comfortable with that, having safe touch. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. shaking hands or hugs, yeah. you know, all that. Even without kind of touch, stuff. just you're seeing each other daily. You're having good interactions Validation. with each other daily yeah. that your 
doing the small things that show that you care about the other person and the other person is doing the small things that show that they mm -hmm. care about you. Yeah. You know, just something as simple as when you come in the door, the people that are around you say, Hey, how are you? Right. It's nice to see Eye you. Contact. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge. And you do the same. Yeah. Yep. So simple things. They like add that. up. Yeah, they, they do. They really add up. Uh, for uh, lung health too, one other thing that I've been pretty excited about is a lot of these warming herbs. Yeah. I mean, pe making sure people have really good circulation. Um, that helps not only with your digestion and but it uh, circulation is a big part of lung health as well. Right. Yeah. You know, it was, it was funny because when we did an Angelica last June, mm -hmm. I don't normally think of Angelica as being more than a women's medicine. Not mm -hmm. that it couldn't be, of course, but you know, it's been the primary use of Angelica over the last, you know, however many years it's mm -hmm. been popular. And the Angelicas that we tend to focus on are usually the, Angelica sinensis, which uh -huh. is the donkey, yeah. yeah, and then somewhat Angelica arch, arch Angelica, the mm -hmm. European Angela, one, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, but in doing the research on that, it I started to really notice that honestly, I mean, yes, as a woman's medicine, it's a great medicine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't get me wrong, but truly, it is really a good lung medicine as well because of the way that it increases circulation mm -hmm. and it helps open up. In Chinese medicine it's, medicine, it's called opening to the exterior. So it helps open up the channels, the pores. It's essentially diaphoretic. Mm -hmm. And that's really important when we're dealing with lung health and especially when the air quality is crap. Mm -hmm. You know, all those particulates are going to come in. You need to open to the exterior so that you can get them back out again. Mm -hmm. You don't want them staying and lingering. And when they linger in your lungs, then you start getting more and more mucus. You start getting more and more irritation. You know, it doesn't function. The system doesn't function well. So Angelica is surprising. It was one of the ones that surprised me this year as being potentially quite good for this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I, I, I like that too. The, another warming one is Elecampane. Yeah, that's a gorgeous one. Yeah, and it's good for upper and lower respiratory issues. I was shocked this year my chickens decided to eat the tops off my Ella campaign in the spring. Right? Well, so yeah, does Sue's it mouth up? just like dropped open. It has it has returned. <laughs> I keep my Ella campaign in a pot that has a hole in the bottom of it. Okay. So that's a heck of a root. Yeah, it's a big, huge root. And I have really clay soil. Uh -huh. So it's really anything that can get into our soil, it's really hard to get it back out. Right. And because Ella Campaign is such a huge uh -huh. root, my yep. thinking when I first did it was, well, it'll break through the bottom of this pot. But then all I'll do is just get one of those Japanese root knives that's really long, or uh -huh. in my case, sometimes the woodworking one that I borrow from uh -oh. my husband. Oh, boy. There is, that's like borrowing sewing scissors for mom yeah. care. Uh -uh. Yeah, really, no wonder why uh, that's dull. It's oh. not dull. It's still sharp as heck. And I lift the pot as best <laughs> I can, and then I get that knife in under there and just start sawing a little bit until the root gives and then I can, you know, pull it away. Okay. And then I dig up what little, what I can. Usually there's not a ton of root, but for my family and our size, we don't need a lot. Right, right. And then the bulk of the plant stays in the pot mm -hmm. and I just move the pot to another spot. Mm -hmm. So this year the chickens decided that they were going to enjoy the spring greens of Ella campaign. Mm. It did come back and it's, it leafed out nicely in, in June and it, I, it should be okay. Yeah, but good. I was shocked. It was, and that was, I usually do it, like move the pot every other year because uh -huh. I get enough off of just the one thing to last me for two years. I'll make a bunch of tincture and then I'll freeze a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. and, and you're fine. Yeah. yeah. And it's fine for about two years. And so this, this is my first year in the new spot. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll be <laughs> curious. <laughs> I, my chickens have never messed with our Ella campaign ever. That's one of the ones I have that's easy for them to access. Then go stomp all over that. It's near the lilac tree and they're just like, eh, yeah, they totally, care. yeah. And they also destroyed the comfrey. It doesn't, oh, well, it's yeah. gone. Oh. I mean, it's gone. They ate the entire comfrey over the course of two years. It is completely gone, not coming back congratulations yeah yeah except i didn't want it to go away and not come back <laughs> i was displeased with this behavior uh, mariah is just sassy uh -huh. 
Oh, I love her, but she is, boy, she just. Sassy. That's her thing. She's she's your trigger, huh? She sure is. Okay. Yeah. She gets ideas mm-hmm. and then everybody follows her. Right. She's definitely the, the head hen. Did you save your comfrey into tincture? No, because they have destroyed nothing? it. I have nothing. I, I, I'll, I'm not I'll, kidding. I have I'll nothing. I'll share with you. I'll share with you. Okay. I have, yeah. I have, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> You're okay. That's the thing about a lot of these weeds is you and your own garden may not have them. Right. But there's somebody around that can help you out. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, for some reason, uh, wild lettuce is popping up all over my, my yard, oh. which is not for lung health. I know that, but. No, that's a good pain herb, though. Yeah, it is yeah. a good pain herb, and yeah. my goodness, I was, I was surprised because I hadn't really seen it that much last it's year. It's probably one that you should be taking before bed so you can get the deep, deep pain. You know, Sleep, just the yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can re- recuperate because of you know with Occupy Medical, uh, yep. you're actually exposed to a lot of stuff, and I'm I'm betting that you can't process most of that out. So mm-hmm. I'm betting wild lettuce is here to help you. It could very well it out. be. Yeah. Remember, yeah. we talked about that in a previous show. That yeah. Herbs will appear that mm-hmm. in your yard that you might need. So, yep. Maybe yeah. Maybe time pay soon. attention yeah. to it. Yeah. 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 Never had it before. I've heard herbs are work. Yep. I mean, yeah. You never had it before, and you suddenly <laughs> and, have it now. Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. And I know that um, uh, the herbs, like many of the, the seeds, they can be viable for decades sometimes. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of times we're blaming our neighbors. For you know, all oh, the dandelion seeds are coming into my yard, but oftentimes they are spreading through roots or rhizomes that have been in the soil for a while, or seeds that have been sitting there dormant for a while. And a lot of times, it's just it's all on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my so, neighbors can blame me because I do let dandelions grow. Yes, and I'm happy to let them grow. Yeah, and they and can you're spread as many seeds as they plant. like. Right. My neighbors can just <laughs> suck it. So it's yep. either in your yard or it came from Candace. There yeah. You go. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Candace. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very pleased to have the garden that I have. I feel really lucky. Yeah. You are you're very lucky. And you don't have neighbors that are horrible. I mean, I know they can be some of them can be challenging, but mm-hmm. like we have a neighbor who decided that he was going to start we have a hawthorn, a very small young hawthorn um near the fence that stands between his yard and ours and there was originally a wide shrubbery short shrubbery that was there and he decided he wanted to take it out and technically it was on his land so we couldn't stop him Mm -hmm. we were not pleased with that because the shrubbery was really hard to get over and the short fence he put in is really easy to get over Mm -hmm. so i started populating our side of the fence with prickly things Mm -hmm. like Like the the hawthorn yeah like the rose bushes and the hawthorn you Uh gave us yeah so he decided that if he thinks it's taller than the fence, he's going to just trim it. Thankfully, he only trimmed one part. There was the Hawthorne had, I think it had two pe- lead runner or whatever uh-huh. tops. And he trimmed one of them off. And the irony of it is that he has lung cancer. And he trimmed this off and threw it away. And I'm like, or threw it, like just threw it in the back of my yard. Uh-huh. And Charming. I'm looking at him going... Dude, you have lung cancer. Of all the people who needs Hawthorn that I know, you're probably one of the most prime people for needing Hawthorn. Mm. And here you are trying to kill it. Mm-hmm. Huh. You know. Right. Gee whiz, dude. <laughs> yeah. Know? It sounds like consent's not really his strong point. No, I caught him and yelled at him. I didn't really <laughs> yell, but I let him know quite sternly that he better not be trimming any more of my shrubberies and that some of these are trees. And if he trims them, that's going to be a serious problem. Mm-hmm. And he stopped some. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So he yeah. can be trained. Well, good. Yes. Yeah. It's nice. It's all Aww. about catching and react. Yep. Well, I, I hope that the recipes that we have on our site will be of help. We're... Got a number of them, actually, not just the black nettle syrup. There's some that are just for kids and mm-hmm. a couple of teas that you have, Candice, um, that help with um, lungs and breathing and circulation. And yeah. please remember to get onto the Practical Herbalist site via our show notes and then just get on there and throw throw the search engine in in mm-hmm. there and see what you can dig out for your own your own favorites. Yeah, and definitely check in with Maria Noel Groves at her website, which are green botanicals, mm-hmm. I think it's dot com. 
Yep. The link will be on the show notes. Yes, so. for sure. But yeah, check in with her. She's got a lot of really good information and her book was fabulous. Oh, so. yes. Both of them. Yeah, right. Definitely. If you're going to buy her book, buy it directly from her. Yes. yes. Please do. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's just on her website. She gets more of the revenue than if you go to Amazon. She doesn't get that as much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think she also said if you buy directly from her, you have access to a chapter or two that couldn't get online. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's got some extra support so. materials, which are honestly really cool. Right. So mm-hmm. that's yeah. the... That's the value of, and I don't believe the book is that much more expensive, if at all. No, no, directly. no, no so, it's not. Um, I think it's the same price because I think the publisher sets the price. So Yeah, they do. Yeah. You get more for buying directly from her. Mm-hmm. And so. mm-hmm. directly supporting her, which is great. Yes. And um, for people that are looking through the show notes that may not be a Herbal Nerd Society member, um, some of those things that you click on you may find a there's a, a wall there. And um, the reason we have that is those are articles specifically for our Herbal Nerd Society members. And that is, if you're interested in joining, that one is $4.99 a month um, or it's uh, $49 for the whole year. Yeah. So that's that's an option and there's ways that you can you can dink around the site and it'll be easy for you to join if you're interested in that. Yeah, plus you won't have any ads. Right, you won't have any ads. No ads. And you'll be supporting us, and we're very grateful for that. So, as always, put put an herb herb on it. it. The statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies